Hey, welcome back to Conversations with Jackie and Bobby. We are your hosts, Jackie and Bobby Angel. And with us today is Jackie Mulligan. Jackie Mulligan is the Chief Eucharistic Officer and Foundress of Reform Wellness, a Christ-centered wellness ministry. And Reform merges faith and functional health to support priests, religious, and laity worldwide to heal the whole person, body, and soul. Jackie, not this Jackie, Jackie Mulligan, welcome. (laughs) Hey, Bobby. Hey, Jackie. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, um, so it's exciting to have you here today because I'm, I I don't know if we were together when we went to New York, but I definitely remember speaking at a love and responsibility years ago. I I don't know. I don't remember what year that was, but I remember meeting you and then I met you again, I think the next year. And now here you are leading this like amazing back because back then you weren't doing this. So, um, I would love to kind of hear the story and like, even when we met, like, I don't, I don't remember what year that was. Maybe it was 2018 or 2017 Mm -hmm. and like the journey that you have been on since we met. It was such a joy to meet you, Jackie, and it was uh, actually your talk at Love and Responsibility, I think it was in 2018, um, that was really pivotal in um, in my faith formation and also just a few of my yeses. Um, I moved back to New York from California in 2017, and so I think when I heard you speak, it was 2018 and 2020. Um, and the second talk when I was uh, when it was I was in the audience, I heard you speak about uh, courage and how saying yes uh, to the Lord um, requires courage and and taking a leap into the unknown. And I was at, in a chapter where uh, reform was developing, but it was very much so uh, a one-on-one wellness practice. And the leap that I needed to take was uh, the courage to start something uh, for uh, a larger community and a larger audience and to reach more people. And I had no idea how to do that and uh, really where, like how the Lord was asking me to do it. And um, it was so beautiful because uh, it was just a small yes that led into very, Uh, or various other yeses. And so it was like these little leaps of faith, um, these small yeses of reforming my own life, uh, of having courage to learn new things, uh, having courage to get uncomfortable, to lean into um, what was on the other side, which was bigger and greater than I could have ever expected, which is now today, Reform Wellness. And so uh, in 2020, I started uh, Reform Online, um, which is now a a foundational class in Reform, um, where we center all different aspects of health and well-being uh, on Christ so that Jesus is at the center of the way that we eat and sleep and manage stress, really everything that we do. So as a Christ-based model of wellness, and there's there's a lot of models of health and wellness and the whole nutrition scene has exploded in so many different ways. So as a Christ-based model, Do you mind sharing a bit of your own faith journey? Because that's obviously a big piece of the puzzle, if not the center of the puzzle. Um, Did you grow up in the church? Did you leave and come back? Did you convert? Would you mind sharing a little bit of your testimony? Sure. I was born and raised Catholic. I received all the sacraments. I went to Mass every Sunday. um, And I thought I was living a very Catholic-centered holy life. I'll use quotations for those who can see. Um, And uh, in 2015, I found myself in a place where on the outside, everything looked really good and solid. Um, I looked very healthy uh, physically and aesthetically. I uh, had a really great career. Um, Everything that the world would tell you uh, is successful or healthy, I checked all the boxes. And inside, um, I didn't feel like that was aligning. It was like what was happening on the outside was there was something that I was still hungry for. Uh, I was still striving for something. Um, It didn't really matter uh, what I achieved in the world. I was still hungry for something. And I was at a pivotal point in a in a relationship, I started noticing that because of stress, uh, certain elements of my health was deteriorating. um, And that uh, like anxiety was uh, something that became like a new normal um, that I just started to accept rather than uh, flag. And uh, my older sister challenged me um, in making some big decisions uh, relationally and, and also just in my own personal life 
uh, to go to a holy hour every day. And that sounded really crazy and radical. And I, though I wanted, I was actually willing to kind of try anything to, to get, gain a deeper understanding of, of why, um, or really what I was, I was, uh, needing. And I think that was the first time, um, that I really met Jesus. And I was, um, where I was living in, in San Diego, I was, I was literally planted in between two perpetual adoration chapels. So I could go to adoration at any time of the day. And Jackie and Bobby, what turned into what I thought was going to be painfully going into one hour of prayer a day turned into what is wrong with me? I can't leave. I don't want to go anywhere else. I don't want to leave. And what happened was it was like Jackie meet Jesus and Jackie meet Jackie. And I started to really learn who I was in him and stop claiming my identity in the world. Um, and I looked at our faith and uh, our relationship with the Lord as the greatest gift rather than this box that I unpacked on Sunday and, and checked and then packed back up to like live my life and started to invite him into different elements of, of my life, starting with my well-being. And so that was really the start and the journey of, of reform, but also of my reversion back to the faith. Um, because I, I think that uh, up until that point, I, I, I'm not sure I really knew who Jesus was uh, to the depths that my heart was really yearning for. And so out of that intimacy with the Lord, your own personhood, because we, we talk on this show, what we really want to focus on is that integration, the, the fact that we are body and soul and forming the whole human person. And so you have been able to put that into a program with reform. And I think why I've admired what the work you've done and felt drawn to it and been through a couple rounds of it now myself, and I'm detoxing currently. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that later is how you really have this Catholic integrative model of the whole person of reforming the whole person and so it's not just nutrition it's sleep it's play it's the the faith portion it's analyzing your stress and the imagery you've landed on is literally a monstrance and it's it's not just this nutrition program that i kind of there's a lot of new age stuff that's thrown into it or like there's some really good gut health and microbiome stuff over here but i've got a you know, weed out it's, it's, and, and put my own Christian spin on, on the, the, those facets, you've really developed this whole model with Christ at the center. Which Bobby and I both listen to different nutritionists, we both, whether on podcast form or whatever, you know, we have friends or people we know who are like life coaches. We know people who kind of go into all these different areas. And sometimes people can go into the the new age stuff, or actually there's like a, a naturopathic endocrinologist that I follow that some of the stuff she, she says is great, but I can't recommend her to people because she also recommends things that are clearly against the Catholic church's teachings. And I am like, Oh gosh, like I don't want people to think I endorse this at all. Mm -hmm. And so you are only one of the only people that I know that I could wholeheartedly be like, yes, like I agree. She has Christ as the center and you're not, it's not like a, Hey, here's one thing that's going to fix everything. You're like, no, let's, let's focus on the whole person. So can you kind of describe, I want to know, like, how did that come about? Um, and then could you share like what reform the pillars maybe are in that when, when it comes, Bobby said the monstrance, and I don't know if people understand, like, there's a picture with like Jesus at the center and then there's different, these different spokes. We'll put the picture the, up. The pillars. That, that's cool. Right. Um, yeah, so I learned um, that we are lots of different elements of, of the whole person. And when we put so much focus on nutrition um, or, or let's say movement, which I think people put the most emphasis on in, in the world, that actually like ends up taking up all of our headspace and all of our attention and really becomes our idol. And so in an effort to not place um, health at the center of our lives and, and not you know push Jesus over, uh, and also to have real sustainable foundation in him and in also in our well-being, everything has to be connected to Jesus because only true sustainable change can come when it's rooted and, and centered in him. And so our, our symbol is the, the monstrance because all the other uh, pillars of, of health are connected to him. 
And so the, I'll name the pillars so that um, those who aren't aware uh, can can engage their their well being on how we redefine health. Um, so faith is at the center, and then we have nutrition, sleep, stress management, community, personal growth, space, functional movement, and play. And all of the pillars around the monstrance are the same size, and I think that's so important because. All of the pillars that I named are equally important. Uh, the way that we eat is just as important as the way we manage stress, which is equal as important as how we play and interact in our community. And the world has kind of uh, clouded our our um, our minds with the uh, these quick fixes um, for short term goals, or to say uh, if you just change your diet uh, or or don't eat carbs or you know work out in a certain way, then you'll be healthy. But the truth is, if you want to be healthy truly from the inside out, um, it has to be balanced on all fronts. And there's going to be seasons of life, which you both know from uh, journeying through reform, where you're able to focus on certain pillars. And there's other seasons where there's going to be pillars that are out of your control. And the best part about this approach is that there's always some aspect of your well-being that you can and control um, that you can uh, pour into um, consistently and uh, and then let the Lord and grace take care of the rest um, until you you move into a season where you can give it more attention. Yeah, I know people who like based on nutrition, they're like, I want to live forever, but they don't want to live forever in heaven. They want to mm -hmm. just live forever on earth. Mm -hmm. And I love that quote you you put in your your book, the quote from I think it's St. Augustine, mm -hmm. right? Like treat your body as if you're going to live forever and treat or your soul is if you're going to die yeah, tomorrow. And your soul is if you're going to die tomorrow. And I think that's so great. Um, and there was one study that was like a, a, a really long study. They had followed people for like maybe 30 years. And they like, what, what caused people to live a really long time? Have you, have you seen this study or heard this? Study? And most people would think like diet and exercise or what are the top things. But really those were kind of they were close to, like at the top 10, they were closer to the bottom. Mm -hmm. The top two were um, your social interactions, like how your, you- Your community. Your community mm -hmm. and how you interact with like the people, that was like number two, was number two was like your community, the people you know, and number one was like the people you don't know. Mm -hmm. Like the how you, how do you treat the person at the grocery store? Mm -hmm. How do you treat your male, your male man or male woman? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was so awesome because I was like, that is a huge part of our faith is that we are social people. We need like, right. No man is an Island. We, we can't do this. We're alone. called for communion. Yeah. And so when people, it, it, I know people who like eat so clean and healthy, but they're still kind of miserable because they don't have other, like they don't have Jesus and they don't have people in their life. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's probably going to mm -hmm. kill you still. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, people, you're so right. It, and Bobby, you obviously listen to a lot of, um, like weightlifting, like, or, you know, a lot of that kind of like the weightlifting world and same there, like people are like, all right, just do this. And it becomes well, as, an idol. As Jackie, you said, like, it becomes the thing I worship my health, my fitness instead of, no, I, I worship Christ. I have to worship something bigger because at some point my health will deteriorate. Like I will get older. Like I'm not going to have the same muscle mass or just the, I don't know. And so you've created such a beautiful program here where it is about integrating the whole person. And um, even be, having gone through it, there's pillars there that I, I, I know I probably should work on, but then the Lord really pierces my heart. Like, no, like sleep, like, no, actually take sleep seriously or even play. It's like, yeah, I play, but I'm thinking about, no, when do I actually just stop working as a kind of a bit of American workaholic? Like, if I'm playing on the floor with my kids, I'll be answering an email or I'll also be trying to read a book at the same time. It's like, no, no, just play with your kids and be present in the moment. And it's, it's something that I, we can nod our heads on. Like, yeah, that's important, but it's, it's hard to do. And the space pillar too, of creating space for the Lord to speak and for yourself mm -hmm. to think we, we need that more than ever. So having been through a couple rounds of your program, yeah, the Lord speaks to me at different seasons where he's like, hey, look over here. I need you to look look over here where you're kind of on autopilot or you've let this diminish. Mm -hmm. And and I was going to say, let, I, I was talking to a group of teens at a Steubenville conference and I 
was reading from Ephesians chapter six, which is right. The tactics of the devil, the, and putting on the armor of God. And I was like, I think the tactics of the devil today are really to keep us just in a constant stage of like distraction and just the scroll, like the constant scroll, like, and, and almost now with this whole virtual, virtual reality thing, like to really keep us out of our real life because mm. life can be painful. And to even what we're going through, Bobby and I are both do, going through your thing where we're not eating dairy or gluten, no alcohol and no refined sugar. And, and that's not easy. You know, it, it's not easy to do that. And even to go deeper in a lot of things and even in healing and, and, um, mentally spiritually it's painful and so most people kind of want to escape i mean i want to escape reality sometimes Mm -hmm. and so most people want to um, escape that so i would love to ask you like what are some of the like glory stories that you have heard from reform like what are some of what do people maybe like what what are the things that like are most like life-changing for them and Mm -hmm. some of the things i would love to hear I would love to share because they're so inspiring um, for for me too. And I what just what you're describing is that we have been distracted uh, by short term goals or um, by like instant gratification. And I think that's what reform really pushes people out of is um, to refocus our lens on Christ, which means eternity. And that's because we we want to we want to go to heaven, but also we want longevity. And if we shift our lens to him and not short-term goals, we're going to receive the um, the healing and the grace to receive the gratification that we want in his time, but also in right order and like total healing, not a Band-Aid and, and not a, a short uh, or quick fix. But it also takes out all the other noise and allows us to pivot into different seasons um, without our health derailing. And so what I mean by that is if we have our eyes on the Lord and we really ask ourselves, you know, how would I, how would I rest if I knew my identity in him, we would, we would be able to place our trust in him and and truly take care of ourselves. You know, how would I eat if I really, um, claimed my identity as a daughter of Christ. So it would eat in a way that would really support my body as a, a temple of the Holy Spirit. So when we shift our lens out of uh, the temporary and, and instant um, and onto him, I think it, it eliminates all the other details. And we would we would eat real whole food that would support us uh, because it um, it's it's one that, that we know um, would be uh, centered on him. And so we've had reformers uh, from all over the globe change their lives. Uh, Jackie and I had a a conversation on the side earlier about um, people making tremendous life changes. And one of the things we see, um, and and it's a little bit of a joke now at Reform, is that people uh, leave their careers that are literally uh, draining them uh, or relationships that are uh, are, are not healthy. Um, And this is because they have the courage again to um, to increase their trust in the Lord, uh, to move from self reliance uh, to increased reliance on on Him. Um, but we've had everything from sixty plus pounds lost uh, in in different seasons. Um, we've had families uh, start observing the Sabbath, uh, praying the Holy Rosary together. Um, I mean, we've had people heal their gut uh, and no longer uh, have to take any sort of medication for anxiety or depression. Um, really, the the list is is endless. And I think for us, when we see, especially priests and religious, heal physically and see the the fruits spiritually, it is. I think the most inspirational because they are the leaders of our church. They are the ones who are really helping our church to reform. Um, and so when we watch priests who are overscheduled and stressed out and unhealthy and not sitting down and eating proper meals, um, not having time to exercise, really start to prioritize uh, their well being, the fruit on the other end of who they're preaching to, who they're leading, who they're giving direction to, who they're forming, it is it is the greatest gift in the world. And it all comes down to the foundations of caring for your, your body and soul in a way that isn't, um, isn't very shiny. It's, it's, it's eating healthy meals at consistent times. It's moving your body for a certain amount of time each day. Um, that almost feels too simple, but when it's rightly ordered, um, it's, it's amazing. The fruits. On the note of the priests, you have a special relationship with reform. 
uh, with the CFRs, with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a bit about how that partnership started and what does that look like practically? It's just, it's a very cool kind of symbiosis of like how that's, that's come to be. Sure. Reform is actually named after uh, the Friars formation. I was working with Father Innocent. We met, um, I think in 2017, uh, and we we met, I was volunteering at a youth rally and, and he was there volunteering as well. And um, it was at a time where I was really uh, deep into my reversion and, and really purifying my, my own soul um, and where Father Innocent was needing to heal his body uh, and was dealing with some different gut uh, issues. And um, it was so inspiring for me. I really felt like the Lord put Father Innocent in my path to help me really um, receive permission to uh, put Christ at the center and offer it um, to everyone and that even priests need to care for, for their well being, and that our well being is our body and our soul together. And so we worked one on one and he had incredible, uh, if you will, reformation, um, and, um, increased, uh, and, and improved sleep and body composition and, and really energy. And if, if you know, father innocent, he is so energetic that if you can imagine him with higher energy, I call him Tigger. He is just always just so full of life. And, um, so he moved into being the um, postulant director and formator. And so I now um, push into the postulants formation for the CFRs. And um, so I'll meet and go through all the pillars um, uh, with them and really help them incorporate the, the pillars into their, their day to day so that they can gain awareness of the current state of their body and their soul and use um, practical tools uh, to continue to remain healthy so that they can serve um, from a place of overflow rather than um, than a, a deficit. So I started observing their formation and literally watched them form into new men uh, the very first year that I was working with the postulants. And I was so inspired um, by their obedience and their simple, consistent yeses that um, I named reform reform after formation um, and and uh, started actually mirroring their formation. So I, I I started living out like their daily schedule because I thought, well, what if I want to do this too every day? Um, you know, the world it was promising me freedom, but actually having so much freedom to decide which mass time and what times I want to work. And it actually wasn't free at all. So it was this uh, mirroring of their formation that really led into beautiful obedience and, and um, growth in my own wellness journey. And I like that you say, um, <laughs> you joke about like when parents are going through this course, especially young parents, because any young parent knows that like your life is not your own. You're like run by your children and, and you can have like Bobby and I have kids that sleep really well. Um, but, and then we have one who doesn't No, no, she <laughs> sleeps, but I, I cannot even tell you like this year, every single time I had a talk, like there was like, there was like one and a half months in a row where like every single time I had a talk on a Saturday, I had a kid coming in at one in the morning, like projectile vomiting. I had a kid mm. at four in the morning waking me up and when, and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Like I, and then for me, sometimes I have like instant migraine if they like burst through the door at 4am and I'm like in the middle of a deep sleep. Yeah, Actually that yeah. happened this morning. Um, so, but, but I like that you guys say, can you can like control, you can control, there are some things that are out of your control. And there are some things that are within your control, like the things that are within your control, you know, that is that it, it, it helps because you're like, okay, thank God. Like I can only do what I can, what I can do. And you can't always, you know, especially with little kids, like you run as even as scheduled as like we are with our kids, um, in the sense of like sleep times, they're still the mornings that they, mm -hmm. the toddler is mm -hmm. waking up at, you know, 5 a.m., 4 a.m. and they don't care. Yeah, they don't. They don't care. Or they're throwing <laughs> up, and there's like seasons of sickness, and which was like all of last year. I feel like there were months and months. But, but I like that you guys say that, and and even having Dr. Bridget on your team, who is so she's a naturopathic doctor. Um, even having her just she went with over the my GI map with me, and um, it was just so great to have a doctor who 
goes through everything, who listens to you, who actually sees you as a person and not just a symptom. And I, I, I posted that on my Instagram and oh my gosh, the response of people that people know that they, they feel like our medical system, like you're just a symptom to be treated. You're not a whole person. And, um, it, it was just beautiful for Dr. Bridget to walk with me through that and like, Oh, okay. The, like she actually wants my healing at the the root level, not just like, whereas like last year I had doctors like, all right, you're going to be on a month of antibiotics after you've already been on a month of antibiotics. And like my gut was thrashed. Like it, it <laughs> was like killed. And so I, I've been hurting, you know, just with a lot mm-hmm. of things. And, um, it, so it's so great that Anybody, for me, I just really appreciate any doctor, any program that sees people not just as a body or not just as a soul, not just as a mind. It's like we are all of it and it is all intertwined and it is all connected. So um, I'm so grateful for you guys. And I I think people might think, you know, reform is maybe they see a lot of women go through it. So I would would love to ask you that question. Like, is, is reform just for women? It is not just for women. And I think Bobby can now attest to that. (laughs) I've been through it. And I think, I think you have a beautiful aesthetic. And so I think some people assume beauty means female only ladies, but you just said, obviously beautiful. (laughs) You've, you've had priests, many priests go through this and, and experience healing. I think men in particular, having gone through it, it's very, you, you receive what you put into it in like, you can pay for the program and you can, and, and listen and, and work through the workbook, but if you don't implement it, and I think men are also, we're less willing to admit there's an issue until something's wrong. And, so and Bobby's ter- a great person that like listens to podcasts about nutrition, but he doesn't implement it oh, until I love, now. <laughs> I love learning it, but the head to the heart journey of like, mm-hmm. that's great information mm-hmm. as I sit on my, with, on the couch with my Cheez-Its and my standard American <laughs> diet. And yeah. I've shared with, yeah, yeah. With men, it's like, I'm going to wait till something goes wrong in my body. And then instead of getting ahead of it, and I shared with you, I've always been able to outlift a bad diet. Like I exercise to eat whatever I want. And he would say that Mm -hmm. to me and I'm like, yeah, but your gut, like it, you could lift as much as you want if you've got leaky gut. But now again, something happens in your (laughs) thirties and now in your later thirties where it's, you know, stuff starts to catch up to you. So well, yes. And Jackie, will you share what you told like Bobby, like for women, a lot of times these issues start coming up in their thirties. Right. And for men, when is that? It's usually later for, for men. And I think really the bottom line is going to, is really not outside of age, but really the stress and when your body is going to reach its threshold of no longer being able to t- tolerate um, stress uh, and it really stresses the root cause of, of disease. And, you know, for us and our approach, we believe that everybody is designed for wholeness and that everyone is designed for holiness. Uh, and that formation um, and living a, a daily rhythm is is also um, for everyone. And so um, it's beautiful because more and more men are coming through reform each round. Uh, and a lot of them are the spouses or the family members of the women who have gone through. Um, but not because the women are saying you need to do this, but because they're watching real change happen um, at a very uh, core uh, level. And it's not happening by accident. It's, it's happening with uh, this beautiful intentionality to live better um, and to be to make consistent choices, to grow closer to God and also closer to um, the way that we know we were designed to live, which is fully alive. And, and I think all of a sudden when you see a person in your life waking up with energy and having clear skin or making better choices, healthier boundaries, um, working smarter and not harder, you want a little bit of that too. Uh, you don't want to stay in the monotony of um, the the rat race or the the uh, vicious cycle that um, we're kept in. I think to keep up with the the Jones, if you will. Yeah, I would say, that I, I because of having like going gluten free and dairy free for my thyroid and just I had like thyroid issues and now for the gut stuff like. I, and I'm not even the best at working out. I've been trying to like, even just go walking. I'm like, I'm still working on it. I'm still working on this like schedule, but I was like, I haven't been this weight since we got married. 
like between no child was I ever back at like my pre and um, I'm like, oh, I actually feel a little, I mean, I still have things I have to work on, but you know, and, and obviously like dairy free, gluten free life is not the easiest and you have to learn how to cook differently. And I've known that because I have family members who do that, but implementing it is like Bobby and I are like, all right, let's just do fast food like five times a week. I mean, seriously. (laughs) So, but even knowing that like cooking your own meals, just even if they're similar to fast food things, like you're not, you're not frying them in soybean oil. You're not frying them in like seed oils that are like super toxic to your body. Mm -hmm. Like I could recreate similar things that like I, I made, um, Chick-fil-A. I made, I made like, and she does a really good imitation in and out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like an animal style. But yeah, I did like a paleo Chick-fil-A nuggets with like a Chick-fil-A sauce. It was really good. So it's like, it's, it's definitely possible and it's, it's difficult. It can be difficult, but yeah, you, you, the testimony of, I I think that speaks a lot is when people are like walking testimonies of, of reform. And so I'm sure there are people who even probably like us or whatever, like they're like, I want to do this, but I don't know. Yeah. If so, yeah. What would you say to someone who's hesitant, who's interested and would acknowledge, yeah, there's certainly areas of my life in sleep, in prayer, and community, that I, I, I would use, I would need this kind of structure, and I would appreciate these resources. What would you, what would you say to someone who's on the fence of checking, or checking out reform, mm. or not even reform, just ask, like mm-hmm. going deeper? Because I think sometimes there is that fear of like I've gotten used to operating at this level of stress, and mm-hmm. for the workaholics and those of us who like pride ourselves on what I can produce every day to be less busy or to take time for self-care seems a bit like, you like know, you're not doing anything. That's kind of what, but feels there, like, but there's know? a fear there, I would say there, there's also like a fear of God may take me somewhere. I, I don't want to go. Mm-hmm. I think the question that we often ask people in discernment is how are you currently living and how is that serving you? You know, is your lifestyle right now bearing fruit? Um, are you actually on the path to heaven? Um, and really getting an honest assessment of, of their current state of their well being. And so right now, if you were to assess, uh, from a one to a 10, how your body felt, and from a one to a 10 where your soul was, I think right there you would get an adequate um, response or, or um, observation of uh, where you are and, and really where you need to be. And, and this is something that um, both of you have, have thought about in reform of, you know, what does it mean to live fully alive? And if you were to really take time to describe that physically and spiritually, what would I look like, feel like, act like, um, what would my relationship with the Lord be like if I was fully alive? That is how we were intended to live. So if, if you know where you are right now and you know where fully alive is, you need to bridge the, cat, the gap from here to there. And often that gap is one that the Lord needs to get us through. Uh, and so we need him to be able to get us from, from here to there. Um, But I think the fear also comes down to going all in. There is this, and I think fear is the the best word. And we'll go back to to the uh, initial prompting uh, from the the earlier part of the conversation of courage is, you know, am I willing to give it all to the Lord, not knowing what it's going to look like, Um, being stressed, uh, stretched out of my comfort zone uh, and holding nothing back from Jesus as he's held nothing back from us. And that's scary uh, because uh, that might mean uh, relationships. That might mean our favorite foods. That might mean um, certain certain uh, people and, and relationships uh, in our life as far as uh, uh, friendships and, and habits and, and things like that. Um, but when it's in the right order and it's of him, uh, it's a beautiful purification and pruning. It, it's not a punishment um, in, in, in any way. Uh, and it's ultimately the, the mirroring of the desires of our hearts. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I think just as humans, we're really good at making idols out of things. Yeah. And and sometimes that can be our comfort. Like we just, we, we want our comfort food. And I like emotionally eating, like Bobby and I were talking about this and he was like, I just want my Cheez-Its at the end of the day. I'm like, that's emotional dependency on those <laughs> Cheez-Its, babe. Like mm. that's it. Like, I can quit whenever I want to. Because I totally do that too. Like that, com- like food was totally like my comfort, like, especially if my children are like stressing me out, you know, I'm like, okay, let me just eat like whatever and cook, 
you know, I mean, not like I didn't cook paleo brownies yesterday that were delicious, but (laughs) still, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can kind of see how we're really good as humans at making idols and, and especially we just love our comfort. And, um, sometimes God is calling us to trust more in him, some, you know, and, and those things that it's like, he's not providing the comfort other things are. And so Mm -hmm. we, we definitely make idols out of those other things. You mentioned a one to 10 scale. Is that significant? Is that like measure? Like, how do you measure that? It's funny because uh, you, once a week we'll have a, a team meeting and we'll kind of go around and say, okay, where's, where's your body? Where's your soul? And um, we often laugh uh, just because sometimes they're, they're really high ratings and, and, and other times they could be low based on some of the choices and the decisions we've made. And it's, it's, it's really just laughter to keep it light. Um, but it's an observation and, and really, Bobby, the, the numbers are just to keep it simple and not to overcomplicate uh, the, the scale. But um, to really just have a quick snapshot of where am I right now and where do I want to land at the end of this week? Where do I want to land at the end of this month or the end of this year? And if you're at a, a solid three across the board over and over again, um, you're not serving uh, from an overflow. You're serving from a place of, uh, of a deficit um, where you're going to get sick and, um, and you're going to be relying on things to sustain you like coffee or caffeine or any other vice, um, that is ultimately going to make you dependent, um, and keep you distracted. My body's confused right now because I'm on the part two of your initial class called digging to the roots is something Jackie, my Jackie and I were finishing up but I got started late on like the actual implementing part of it, like the GI test, which is super interesting. It's a poop test for anyone listening. <laughs> um, but it's fascinating what you get back, the whole microbiome and the gut health and that whole thing. And if you got parasites or worms and all that. Jeff. I got worms. No, um, you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> we have, we both have a parasite though. But yeah, it's, I'm on day four and um, day one and two were great. But yesterday my body definitely started getting a little angry at me of like, mm my it, it's not withdrawal you you call it um die off die off where yeah it's like there's been stuff living for a long time and it wants what it wants and uh it's it's like a lent it's like a purification period where you either throw in the towel and be like nope nope i'm experiencing discomfort i'm running back to my comfort stuff or i say nope this is part of the deal and the lord is with me and i can do this yeah, what, Jackie, what would you say, like, people who, I, I mean, people ask this uh, to Bobby and I, like, like when it comes to prayer, and we say, like, you know, every season you kind of have to recalibrate um, even your prayer life, right? Like, you're always, like, every time you have a new kid, you're like, okay, well, we have to, how are we going to pray together? How, are, how am I going to pray separately? How, what would you say to people, you know, they're like, oh, I was doing so great, and then I messed up, and like, what, what would you, what advice would you give to people? I would um, first go right to prayer and asking Jesus, which um, is is the unpopular response, but hear me out here, and that um, we are called to live simply, but also um, to invite him into to the different aspects of our health. And so um, we want to start with what's most essential, and a lot of times it's the foundational pillars, which are prayer, sleep, or nutrition. And I think that out of one of those three, it's um, returning to one of them consistently and focusing on doing one of those things consistently day in and day out. Now I'm gonna vote prayer above all because from there uh, you'll be able to center on the others. Um, But I think that that's where people want to run and jump into the next step of, no, I'm gonna focus on my workouts or a a specific um, eating protocol or, or diet and, we skip over the most foundational basics and that's just nourishing our bodies, getting enough sleep, actually praying. Um, I think a lot of times what we think we do and what we actually do are are very different uh, in our day to day. And so I would invite people to return to the basics um, and, and start living in a way where there's some consistency, where your body can start to trust you to nourish it consistently or to, to rest consistently. 
um, or to, to pray consistently. And from there, you will have a greater capacity to add more elements uh, and aspects to tend to your well being um, so that you can move the way that you want and interact the way that you want. But it has to come from a place uh, where there is a solid foundation. I think that's great too, because when it comes to prayer, you're asking the, or you, hopefully you're asking the question like, why? Like, why am I going to these things? Or why am I scared of X, Y, and Z? Why am I afraid of, you know, it, it's kind of for me, like going into the deeper, the deeper wounds of, of things like, well, I feel rejected. So I'm afraid. So I run to food or I feel I, I, I go to social media and I, I scroll, I scroll, I scroll because this, you know, it's just like I, when you talk about prayer, it's like, because hopefully you're asking the question, like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I running to this? Why am I escaping to this? And, and prayer kind of, it, it has, it, there's a good self-awareness of those, all those other things. Yeah. It puts it all in order. I even like how when it comes to the exercise thing, which uh, is a good thing that can become an idol, uh, you frame it as movement because it encompasses Mm -hmm. a whole lot of things in that regard. And I've had my standard chest day, back day, leg day. I never skipped leg day, ever. Um, Yeah. For (laughs) 15, 20 years, I've had this. But even this last round, I've started to look at my own exercise as movement and pushing, pulling, like, and part of it is, I think, just being later 30s, and you, I can't do what I once did as a young buck, let's, let's say, <laughs> or I don't have the time for it with the children. God bless them. Um, so it's just really, even how does my, like, daily exercise, my movement, how does that honor my family? How does that honor Christ and uh, the life I have while I have it? You know, so, so that has helped me. It didn't, it didn't come up the first round I did it, but in this digging to the roots, for some reason, the, the movement piece is also, God's been asking me to look at that. Yeah, it, and I, I think that there is sometimes a pain point in reform. We actually don't even talk about nutrition or movement until like the second part of the class. And people cannot understand, like, how are you not telling me what to eat yet? And why are we not talking about an exercise program? Um, And that is because um, we have to recreate uh, or re- yeah, recreate the story or, or uh, put on a new lens of looking at our our health and our life uh, through the lens of Christ. And we always say like, you can't skip, you cannot skip prayer. Like it has to come from there because it's from there that we're gonna be able to really understand the why between behind all of this. And um, it's not a quick fix. And I think that everybody says yes to reform and they're like, okay, now tell me what to do. And we're like, no, no, we're actually not gonna tell you what to do. We're gonna point you to Jesus and he is gonna gonna, uh, tell you what to do. And that's really what the shift is, is is coming out of what we've always known. Like Bobby, you're, you're describing you know, habitual workout routine that you've had for 20 years. And now you're stepping back and saying like, what is best for my whole person, for, for my body, for my recovery, uh, for my, to manage my stress, um, to maintain a healthy, uh, relationship with my own, um, body image and the Lord. And like all of these things have to be considered in our why rather than, um, just checking a box that again, that we moved in, in a way that we've just been used to. So it is, um, it is changing, uh, the way that we look at at the different elements of our health, but it, again, it has to be in right order. And by the time we get to nutrition, it's almost as though the reformers know what's coming. And that is uh, that um, anything that is not gonna make you healthier uh, is gonna be removed, but also there can be a balance. We want you to enjoy the food that you love. Um, Bobby, what's the food that you and Sarah were talking about that you enjoy on your family visits? A toaster strudels. as. <laughs> As as children of the '80s, we have a fondness for toaster strudels, bagel bites, and all those things. Yes, when we go to the Swaffords, what? it's yeah, we're like, all right, toaster strudel, yeah, bagel bites, egg rolls, like all the kind of stuff you can stick and in like an, that an, an should oven. be fun and enjoyable. And I think that there's a time to 
enjoy and it, we we shift it as it's a it's a treat it's not a, it's not a cheat you're, you're not there's no there's nobody keeping score here uh, it's just a matter of saying like well what is this going to cost me and if you start to to notice that you can afford it in the sense that stress is managed and you've been sleeping well and you've been moving your body then you should absolutely indulge and enjoy the treat uh, if you've been um, habitually going to food or coping or um, kind of overindulging in certain things, um, not manage your stress well, not sleeping, it's just going to be, you know, uh, another um, withdrawal that's actually going to make you more dependent on it because uh, you're not you're not moving from from a way that's really going to support your overall health. So it, it really does empower you when you know the rating of your body and soul because then you're making intentional decisions that are going to support your your whole person and you're no longer going off the desires of the flesh uh or what everybody else is doing you're really moving in an intentional direction i appreciate the gentleness of your program because it's like <laughs> it's it's you know evaluate it and just see is this gonna hurt you or help you and you're, you guys are not the the it's not toaster strudels are of the devil. well yeah, <laughs> yeah, you guys are not the dental hygienist, like <laughs> wagging a finger at us like, well, someone didn't floss now, did they? You're like, no one's judging you. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Well, but we're not going to judge uh, you. We're just going to show you your GI map. <laughs> oh, and that will judge. Yeah, that does enough judging for itself. <laughs> your, <laughs> You're like, oh, boy. <laughs> your gut will judge yourself. <laughs> Jackie, as we start to... Uh, land the plane on the conversation. Is there any final message or final word you'd like to to share either about reform or about what the Lord's been speaking in your own heart as of late? Yeah, I, I think that um, with every yes, um, a greater yes is going to be given in return. And so just the courage to, to say yes. Um, and I think that's going to start with um, exposing any any holes to the Lord so that he can really make you whole. And you know, we have this path to wholeness and holiness. We, we talk about it reform and it really is allowing the Lord into every part of your life, into every area that he already sees that you think that maybe you're, you're hiding. Um, but to do so in a way where you're really allowing him um, to, to do it with you. And that's the best part of, of this journey is that when you say yes, that you want him at the center, he's from that moment, he's already there and just so gently uh, waiting for permission to really be the divine physician. And so I think my invitation would be to start with a small yes in the right direction and just watch how much he continues um, like a snowball to make that yes even bigger uh, and on, in the right direction to, to wholeness and holiness. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jackie. And um, where can people go to learn more about uh, you or Reform Wellness? They can visit our website, which is reformwellness.co, C-O, uh, or our Instagram handle where we share lots of health and wellness and um, spiritual uh, reflections and tips at, at reform underscore wellness on Instagram. Awesome. You guys do great work and we'll keep praying for you. So thank you, Jackie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And I can't wait to continue reforming with both of you. You and, as well. And, and <laughs> we'll let you know how if Bobby <laughs> survives the 60 days. Oh, boy. <laughs> See you next time. Whoa, what did you think of that episode, Bobby Angel? Tell us in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, all the things now. Or don't. Do whatever you want. Whatever you want. You have free will. God bless you.